In this video, I'm going to teach you six simple ways to animate your Framer site without writing any code. If you don't know it already, Framer is a design tool that works really similar to Figma. It allows you to basically design a website on a freeform canvas, but here's the best part. In Framer, you can publish your design straight to the internet as a real, responsive, working website instead of just exporting it as an image. And yeah, let's explore how your published site can be spiced up with some cool animations super easily. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. So as you can see, here I am in Framer with our little starter file. And make sure to remix this, it's going to be in the description. So you can also copy this project to your account. And then if you're going to go to starter page right here in the left panel, you'll basically see the same thing that I'm seeing right here in this video. And yeah, you can just explore these animations with me. So the first thing that I want to show you is the appear animations. So whenever we select an element on our Framer website, we have a bunch of properties on the right panel and we have this effects section. So basically we're going to find all of our animations or most of our animations uh, right here on the effects panel. So first of all, let's try the appear effect. So basically what the appear effect does is that triggers an animation when we land on the website. So for example, now this little icon right here on the top will fade in as I load this website. So let's take a look at this. As you can see, it just fades in. It doesn't even really uh, like show. It's, it's not really visible. So maybe we can you know, specify a different setting for the appear effect. So I can just click the enter right here. And this is where I specify the, you know, the position where this element will be coming in from. For example, I can have a little Y offset. So maybe it will come in from the top minus 20 offset along the Y axis. And then maybe I can also change the transition time. So it's going to be a little bit longer transition. Maybe the bounce will be, I don't know, 0.1. And then we can also set a delay Mm, let's set point 0.4 and then set the opacity to zero. So it's going to be fully invisible at start. You can see that we have this little appear effect on the icon and we can add these to multiple elements. So for example, I can select this element that I added the effect to, press command and K. I just remember that I have not started Keystroke Pro, so you cannot see my shortcuts. Sorry for that. Again, command and K. So copy effects. And then basically now, if I go to this button and go command and K again, paste effects, then I'm going to be just pasting in the effect. And now both of them will have the same uh, little effect. What I can do to make it look a little bit better is I can stagger them. So on this other one, so this button, I can go to the effect and I can set um, a little delay, a little bit more delay uh, on the transition. So maybe 0.6. And now, you know, the icon comes in first and then the button. So, you know, you can play around with this a lot. So for example, I can add all of these appear effects to all of these cards, for example. So let's say I want to add an appear effect to this card right here. I'm going to go to the right panel, effects appear. And then I'm going to maybe have minus 40 offset along the Y axis. And then again, a little bit longer maybe 0.1 bounce and then 0.6 delay. And now we're going to have a little peer effect on this one as well. So now I think I'm just going to speed up the video and create like a little staggered effect so that the icon comes in first at the top, then the button, and then all of these little cards come in right after each other. So I'm adding the effect to the last element as well. And hopefully when I load the site, we'll see a nice staggered effect. And yeah, this is exactly what we see. However, the text is not really uh, being animated. And I have not added appear effects to the text layers because there is another way to animate text layers, which looks much better than just a simple appear effect. So let me show you that. This is going to be our second way of uh, animating on the framework website, by the way. So if you go to the right panel effect and then select text, then basically we added this text effect to our website. So we just three clicks, but we can you know, further customize this. So 
For example, I can animate per word instead of per character. And then maybe I can add a little bit more delay to this. So maybe 0.3, let's see how that looks. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And then we can add the similar text effect to the subtitle here. So effects, text, and then per line perhaps. So each line will be animated in right after each other. And then maybe a little bit more delay here, 0.5. And now we have a fully animated hero section. And I did it like in, I don't know, a couple of seconds or minutes, sorry. <laughs> but I guess, yeah, a couple of seconds as well. So uh, yeah, it's, it's very crazy that you can do this in Framer. Um, so yeah, now let's move into the third way of animating things on the Framer website, which is going to be a scroll animation. So how can we animate something in as we scroll down on the website? Let's say I scroll down here and I want to animate this little block here from the bottom as, as I scroll down. Well, I can select this stack right here. And on the right panel, I'm going to click Effects again. And I'm going to select Scroll Animation. So here, the trigger is, as you can see, Layer in View. So as this stack that I selected comes into the view, this animation that I set right here will be triggered. You know, I can select the preset here, but I can also specify the effect. So I'm going to set the opacity back so we can actually see what we are doing with the element. So maybe we offset it to the bottom, maybe 40 pixels. And then we can again specify the time here, maybe a little bit slower transition. And then we can have a little delay so it doesn't come in uh, immediately, but it waits a little bit. Then we just set the opacity back to zero so it will nicely fade in as well. And yeah, let's take a look at this. So as I scroll down, you can see that we have the nice animation as we scroll down. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Now let's explore how we can actually animate really as we scroll, because now what happens here with this scroll animation is that when we reach a specific point on our scroll on our website, this will just animate in from that from state that we specified and it will complete the animation. But what if I want to control the whole animation, the complete animation with my scroll position? So perhaps if I start scrolling here, but if I stop here, the animation doesn't complete, but it stops midway. How can I do that? Well, I can use scroll transform for that. And let's explore that with this little element right here with this Framer UI. So if I select this Framer UI frame right here and go to the right panel, I can select scroll transform instead of scroll animation. And then here I can specify a from state and a two state for our little animation. So the from state will be, I don't know, one opacity. Maybe I can scale it up a little bit, 0.1. And then maybe I push it down with the Y offset. And then I actually want to 3D rotate this as well along the X axis to tilt it a little bit. But as you can see, as I'm moving it with 3D rotation, it doesn't really have like a 3D effect because it doesn't get perspective distortion. And so I can just add perspective distortion to this element on the right panel quickly. So let's go here to transforms and apply perspective. So now if I go back to scroll transform and the from state, you're going to see that now this effect is, is much better. So let's have, I don't even know what I want here, maybe 40 along the X and then, and then yeah, maybe just animate it in from there. Let's see how this looks. As you can see, as I'm scrolling on the side, this Framer UI is just moving in 3D space and it looks pretty nice. However, what you notice is that this animation doesn't complete when I reach this section. As I scroll further, it just continues moving. So how can I make sure that this animation only happens throughout this section right here? Well, what I can do is I can give a unique identifier to this section on the right panel. So I'm going to select it, go to the right panel, scroll section, and here I can specify the ID. Maybe it's going to be trigger. And then I'm going to go back to the scroll transform that we just added to the UI. And I'm going to select the trigger section in view instead of on scroll, because what on scroll does is that it completes the animation from the top of the page to the bottom of the page. So the animation will actually reach the two state that we defined here when we reach the bottom of the site. But now that we selected section in view and then the trigger section, which is right here, this section, 
Now what this basically does is that this animation from the from state to the to state that we define here will you know play out along the area of this scroll section that we defined. We can also add this little transition so it's going to be pretty smooth and let's take a look at this right now. As you can see it happens a little bit more faster because it needs to complete animation a little bit faster and yeah it looks really nice and you know I can go really crazy and maybe add another scroll transform to the layer within which is this breakpoint inside of the UI. So let's go ahead and apply a scroll transform to that one as well. I'm going to apply the transition here too and then section in view will be the same section trigger and then the from state will be opacity one scale one and maybe I just want to animate it in from the bottom so like this it will just slide in so let's see I scroll down and it doesn't really happen yeah because I didn't set it correctly so on the from state I actually want to move it down and the to state I want to actually move it to the top so now it is going to happen in a way that it slides in from the bottom yeah looks really nice and we're still creating this without writing any code and then like designing on a freeform canvas like drawing rectangles pretty amazing so now that we discovered these four ways of animating on the framework website let's also take a look at the fifth way of animating something so if I scroll down to this last section, you're going to see that we can animate with component as well. So what we can do is create components and then variants within those components. And we can connect those variants to create, you know, smooth transitions between them. Let me show you how this is done. Basically, I'm going to turn this section into a component with right click and create component. And then here, I'm going to call this variant one the default variant. This is, by the way, here is the component canvas. This is where we, you know, add different variants, hover states perhaps to these components. And so what I can do is I can click here to create a new variant. Let's say this is going to be like a hover state. So when I hover uh, this button, we go to this hover state. So what do we want to change on the hover state? Well, I've prepared a little circle here within this frame, which is right here. You can see it on the layers panel. Maybe we can just scale it up. So let's just scale it here to a really, really large size. So it will take up our complete you know, viewport. We can just add an interaction. So now if we preview this, nothing really happens. We have to define a trigger that will make us transition smoothly into that other variant. So I can select the little button here and I can connect with these little icons. So I can drag this and connect to hover. This will be a click interaction. So I select a click, then I click here on the canvas. This is how I, you know, confirm this interaction. If this is a hover state, it's not going to be a click. So I don't know why I switched uh, or selected click, but I can, you know, modify it later. So if I go to the top right corner to interactions, I can select the interaction that we've just added and then I can select different uh, trigger. So it's going to be mouse enter since it's a hover state. So when we enter with the mouse, so we hover over the area of this button, we will transition into the hover state. And then we're going to transition back. So let's just drag and connect it to the default variant. And this is going to be a mouse leave interaction. So when we leave with the mouse, we go back. So let's confirm this as well by clicking on the canvas. And yeah, just take a look at this. So if I hover, we see the hover variant. And then if we leave, we see the default variant. This is a little bit too fast. So I can select the primary variant. And on the right panel, I can specify a different transition. So it should be pretty long, maybe 1.1 seconds with zero bounce probably. So now it will be much slower and it will look a little bit better. So now if we go back to our website, we're gonna see that if we scroll down, we can, you know, hover over this button and our website will be animated. And this is here is a really simple, you know, example. You can do so much more, you can do crazy animations with these components. And so this was the fifth way, but what is the sixth way? Well, basically, if we think about it, uh, on the phone variant, on the phone breakpoint, sorry, if someone is visiting this website on a phone, 
they're not really going to be able to hover over this button to trigger this animation. So how can we make sure that this is accessible and actually visible for phone users as well who have like these touch devices? Well, we can use a scroll animation technique, which is called scroll variant. So if I go here on the phone breakpoint and select this component that we just created, I can go to the right panel to effects and then I can select scroll variant. So basically the scroll variant effect allows us to change the variant of a component as we scroll down the site. So for example, we can select the trigger layer in view. So when this component comes into the view, we will switch from the default state to the hover state or from the default variant to the hover variant. Let's preview this phone breakpoint and see if it actually works. So I'm gonna just scroll here and then yeah, it just automatically switches to the hover variant without having to actually hover over the button. This was just a quick run through of like six ways to animate your framer sites. I think it's super cool that Framer made it this easy to create these breathtaking animations. And again, this was just a quick like introduction to these effects. If you go to framer.university and browse the resources, you're gonna find a bunch of examples where these effects are utilized to create, you know, amazing effects, really, really breathtaking effects. So yeah, make sure to go ahead and check out framer.university. I'm gonna also leave it down in the description. And yeah, make sure to comment if you have any questions. Like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and I'm gonna see you in the next one.